would you like to talk about the old schoolhouses? Sure. Uh, what what developed American power, inventiveness, and wealth was a kind of crazy quilt of schooling offerings. But I'll go to the more formal ones in one- and two-room schoolhouses, which would contain between 40 and 90 kids. Since it was impossible, especially in the independent uh, uh, air of colonial America and early federal America to actually teach 90 kids, they were they were broken up into groups, and those groups were half taught by accomplished students, not A students, but students accomplished in leadership and with a pretty good understanding of what the, the business to be learned was. Uh, because of this heavy student participation, and I would say also uh, the shortness of the term of confinement, it, it, it hardly ever went beyond two and a half months, and the average amount of time per day was two hours. Or in some places like Boston, it was longer than that, but not much longer. So as a consequence, what well, you were talking to me about Linux, a kind of open source learning where everyone was a potential teacher and you know any area of interest potentially could connect you with with a whole lot of uh, the learnings that would help you navigate the society because of that i believe that the curriculum the formal curriculum written down in the book was easily superseded by a kind of practical curriculum, and I'll be specific about this. Whatever seemed to be taught, here are some of the things that were at the center of the curriculum. And I'm even going to sidestep the uh, trivium and quadrivium, which which are excellent ways to organize. But I'm going to sidestep those and say that probably the single distinguishing characteristic of an excellent mind, a trained mind, is the ability to concentrate and shut out everything else. In fact, there probably are no theories of intelligence that don't move concentration to the number one position is the most reliable evidence that you're dealing with a strong mind. Well, think of the schooling that exists now. The bells ring or the horns of the buzzers every 42 minutes, but in the meantime, it takes 10 minutes for all the kids to string into class because there are no penalties, nor do they understand what they're costing themselves. There are infinite numbers of loudspeaker announcements, messengers pounding on the door. I mean, our schools are a chaos of broken time. Now I'll step back a little bit farther and say, if somebody wanted to be certain that concentration didn't develop across a wide front in students, they would invent the kind of schooling that we have. <laughs> okay. The next thing I think that no one would disagree about is that the skills of associating with all kinds of people to move into a leadership association or a follower association or to an egalitarian association, those skills are priceless, priceless. They don't tend to develop in an environment where you're not supposed to talk, <laughs> you know, 
and you're not supposed to talk to anyone except the authority in front of the class. Uh, there, there. I mean, I could, I could really beat this to death. But if, if you just wanted to create a skillful association and and someone skilled at concentration, you would not go about it the way we're doing it. Now, let me move into a third area, which most people would put first, probably. I would guess the ability to express yourself verbally and behaviorally in all kinds of situations is just a sine qua non of opportunity. There's so many ways you can step on someone's toes or make yourself seem unacceptable to a group that if we only taught expression and left everything else up to the kids, we would be doing them a grand favor. So now we have concentration, association, expression, none of which are priorities even in the gifted and talented programs. Then let me add what the early Americans may well have put at the top, and that was raw experience. You only need to read Benjamin Franklin's autobiography to see that by the age of 11, he probably had, certainly by the age of 13, he had more experience than the average person who grows up and drops dead in New York City. And he, he was hungry, and so were all of the people he associated with. He was hungry to get raw experience. Even though he came from a family, they weren't poor, but they had no money. There were 17 kids. He crossed the Atlantic twice all by himself, all by himself. I and mean, we're talking about the 18th century, where it was, as they say, a trip. Uh, he put himself through a curriculum, and so did his friends. After working 60 hours a week, the Yale or Harvard would not dream of asking their undergraduates to match. Uh, so we have been stupendously dumbed down. Now I've touched four bases, concentration, association, expression, experience, uh, we could go a little bit farther, but I think that's enough for a first chapter of of reforming, when I say your own practice, I mean anyone listening who has has kids, whether they're in school or whether they're being homeschooled.